All right. It's the moment you have all been waiting for, John. I know it's the moment that you have certainly been waiting for. I've been waiting for it. And we go last but not least, the St. John's Red Storm. Rick Patino, head coach of the St. John's Red Storm. It's not new anymore. I think we're all we're all past the point of saying, holy crap, I can't believe it because we, we've seen it now. It's true. It's happening. But he was the media darling of Big East Media Day. He's got quite the project as well, but this is Rick Pitino dealing with a project, and we've seen him fix rosters, fix teams, fix programs, win championships, go to the Final Four with similar projects before. 14 new players for Rick, three from Iona, two returned from St. John's, two freshmen, an older team, seven players who are seniors or grad seniors, and man, the St. John's buzz is out there. So John, I'll start asking you this within Fox where you work and you're covering St. John's. And I know that you are getting ready to, to cover this program all season. And everybody's been talking about St. John's, but in the offices, in your conversations with other media members, the buzz around St. John's, is it real? I know it is, but what is it in your circles? And do you think it's warranted? Well, it's absolutely warranted because it's New York City, it's Rick Pitino, and it's a, a brand that has been off the map. And if they get back on the map, the best period as a sports fan or in sports is when a program is on the rise. You know, once a program's established the winning, they're very interesting, but they've already established to date. It's it's most interesting when, when things are turning, right? When the oil's in the pan and the meal starts to get made, it's when it's really interesting. Uh, it's, you know, it's fun once you've gotten there, but then there's the pressure of having to sustain it. And that's a different vibe. And then people expect it and all that and whatnot. And then I find people get more riled up when you've established a standard and you lose than they do when you're on the rise and, and, and you're winning. And you know what I mean? Like, I just think it's it's two totally different mentalities. How are things in my circles at Fox Digital at Fox Sports dot com? We have about four maybe five what we call tent poles, tent poles that we're going to hit this season, tent poles that we say we've got to, we've got to set up a tent pole and make them a priority. St. John's is tent pole. Number one, number one, they're in New York. They're in the big East. Fox sports is a partner of the big East. It's a no brainer for us to cover Rick Petito. And when this interview is released, I will have done an exclusive sit down with Rick Patino for an upcoming massive release across Fox sports platforms and my platforms on him, his life, why St. John's what's going into this job, how he views his legacy, what he still wants to do and New York city basketball, the big East, the history of the big East and what he foresees. That's what I'm targeting here. And we're going big. So to answer your question, it's everything. You know, I, I get the privilege of calling St. John's season opener on Tuesday with Sarah Kustak on FS1. I can't wait. We can't wait to bring it to people. And our production crew has been talking about this telecast. It might be against Stony Brook, and I know everybody's excited for Michigan. But the fact is, Dave, even the Stony Brook game, different vibe, different vibe for a season opener. It's going to be an event, and we want to cover it as such at Fox. So to answer your question, this is big. It's bold. It's beautiful for all of us. It is priority number one for me. John, I remember last season, you and I crossed paths at the end of end of a game on the concourse in Carnesecca yes. Arena. And you looked at me and you said, Dave, it's going to be a long season. Uh, and it certainly was. So things have certainly changed in Queens. The outlook has certainly changed in Queens. And the players have certainly changed in Queens. Joel Soriano is the guy that Rick Pitino at his opening press conference named as the captain and made it a point to say that he brought him back in order to develop him and turn him into a pro. John, who are you most looking forward to seeing in the hands of Rick Pitino develop? Is it Jordan Dingle? Is it what Naheem Aleen can do at St. John's instead of UConn? Is it Chris Ledlam coming over from Harvard? Is it the freshman Simeon Wilcher or is it the straw that stirs the drink for St. John's Danis Jenkins, who followed Rick Pitino from Iona. There are a lot of really interesting pieces, a lot of talented players, but John, who are you most looking forward to seeing at St. John's under Rick Pitino? Chris Ledlam. 
because I cannot tell you how many Ivy League coaches I heard from when Ledlam transferred to St. John's. And the Ivy League coaches said, thank God he's out of our league. They couldn't wait for him to get out of their league. They said he was the best athlete in the Ivy. Tough as hell, impossible to cover, impossible to box out, like a football player. And I think if Ledlam really hits it with Rick Pitino's coaching, you're talking about a guy who could just be an absolute force, a force to be reckoned with. And with how hard Patino gets his guys to play, Ledlam already played hard, Dave. Now think about what happens with Patino's coaching. You know, Dennis Jenkins has already developed under Rick. We know he's developed. The obvious answer is Jordan Dingle. Because you're talking about a guy who was averaging 20 points per game in the Ivy at Penn, super smart. And, you know, we want to see what this team is when Dingle's on the floor. We, we haven't, because he's been dinged up, no pun intended, you know, it's been tough uh, for, for us to, to understand what he's going to be. But my answer to you is Lyle. Uh I, I think that he is in for a tremendous season. I think he's embraced everything that, that they're putting down. And I think he's going to be an elite rebounder of the basketball with an unlimited motor. And uh, I think he's only scratched the surface as a player. You can't teach motor. He's got it. He's a terrific rebounder. What do Patino and staff do to get him to another notch, if not two or three notches? There's two freshmen that I'm super excited to see how Rick Patino is going to mold. That's top 30 freshman Simeon Wilcher, who initially committed to North Carolina, but decided to come closer to home and be coached by Rick Patino at St. John's. And Brady Dunlap, who from California initially committed to Notre Dame, but also decided to be coached by Rick Pitino and came to St. John's. The freshman who will be under his tutelage, and the jump may not happen in year one, but that year two is so enticing for what the future of this program could be. And Rick Pitino has been adamant that he's got six years here and he wants to leave St. John's as a national powerhouse. And, you know, that is, uh, I mean, I can't even fathom what that could potentially look like, but he's done it everywhere else. And to see that these two guys, Simeon Wilcher and Brady Dunlap, could potentially be cornerstones of what Rick Pitino is building is just so exciting, especially with what is coming down the pike in recruiting as well. John, uh, you've talked to plenty of coaches. You've talked to plenty of insiders about Rick Pitino's history, his ability to develop players, but about him being in the hotbed of New York with this kind of talent that could potentially be coming in. uh, What is being said about what the potential is not right now for St. John's, but maybe next year and the year after. Well, it's loaded. I mean, in recruiting battles, it's been well documented that, that they're going to be able to get certain guys. And uh, some of those guys are flipping are about to flip or will flip. That's all the rumor mill out there people know what i'm talking about that are that are inside the depths of this world that's all the patino effect i mean he's going to be able to recruit players that that st john's previously has not been getting and that's why you hire him you know dave at the end of the day you've got to have great players and when you are able to develop that's the miss that's the piece there's a lot of good players out there what makes a player great is his willingness to be coached and his willingness to play for a program and understand the, the greater purpose. Rick gets all that out of his guys. He is driven to the nth degree, and he's determined to get this thing on track at St. John's. So that, to me, is why, for a guy like Simeon Wilcher, in year one, in, in, in month two, month three on the job for Patino, The fact that he's able to get him, uh, a North Carolina guy that was said to be a Tar Heel, now he's a member of the Red Storm. Like Hubert Davis obviously knew the kid had talent. Now it's up to Patino to unlock that next gear. You think he'll unlock it? Sure do. And Brady Dunlap fits the modern day game. He can be a shot maker. He's got to just consistently get better, evolve, and, and work on his body and work on learning what Patino wants day in and day out. But it's so exciting. I mean, it, 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 they're, they're in, they are in all the recruiting battles that St. John's fans as a fan base dream of. And that, to me, 
is why this program is in the best spot you could imagine, considering how recent years have gone. They have the right leader. He's going to be able to get big-time recruits. But, Dave, nowadays, stars next to your name don't mean crap. If you have a, uh, a, a coach who gets recruits but doesn't know how to make the most of them, it doesn't matter. I can't tell you how many times I've heard this preseason, just because a team has more talent. This is from players. A player said to me this preseason that last year his team had more talent, but he thinks this year's team will be better because the pieces fit better together. At St. John's, you're going to have talent. And because the coach is a little bit crazy, but in a good way, the pieces of the puzzle will fit together because he will force them to do so. John, we are going to end it with this for the St. John's fans. There are expectations for year one at St. John's. Rick Pitino has brought in an experienced roster and fans are expecting to finish in the top half of the Big East. They've been picked fifth. I think that's accurate. I think that's where they should be. And being picked fifth in this conference means you're pretty much a lock to make the tournament uh, if all things go right. St. John's obviously hasn't done so in a very long time, hasn't won a game in the tournament in over two decades. Are the expectations for St. John's valid? Where do you see them finishing and how do you think this year will go for the Red Storm? Expectations are valid. I'm not reacting to a loss to pace. We're all not going to be talking about it after Tuesday night. It doesn't matter. I think Patino was trying to prove a little bit of a point and his team was shorthanded. You're not trying to lose to pace. Of course not. I credit pace for winning the game, but the fact of the matter is I'm not going to overreact. This to me is a 21 to 23 win team. I'm going to say 21, 22 wins. I'm going to say seven seed in the NCAA tournament, fifth place in the big East and the Red Storm dance and win an NCAA tournament game for the first time since 2000.